guys, welcome to TMXing Adventures. My name is Lisa Keegan and I'm here today to inspire you with a brand new recipe from cookiedo.com.au. Now this is a beautiful recipe, perfect for entertaining or Father's Day or a special occasion or even if you just want to be fancy one night. So let me show you how easy it is to be fancy in the Thermomix really quickly and simply. So let's get started. So just gonna click on the first step and the first one has some nuts in it. Now, if you can't do nuts, that's okay. Just swap it out for some seeds. All right, doesn't have to be nuts. Now, my bowl is slightly wet, um, so it will stick a little bit, but doesn't really matter. This it doesn't have to be topped beautifully. And finally, this piece, it's just gonna be rough topped. So one and a half ounces. Now you might notice it's in ounces. That is because it is from our US platform that is part of our cookie do. And it doesn't really matter that it's in ounces because our scales, as you can notice, it just matches up, right? It just does the work for us. So there is, I've put in, it says mixed nuts. I've got almonds, walnuts, and cashews today. So let's get that lid on and we're going to now chop that five seconds speed five to then put aside in a bowl. Transfer to a bowl and set aside for later. So now we're going to put into the Thermomix next. Let's just put that aside. Look at that. Chopped up. Rough chopped, right? We don't want it really, really fine. It is literally a rough chop. So in that goes. Okay, next up. No washing the bowl. How good is that? That is one of my favorite parts of a recipe. Uh, one ounce of oil. Now if you're trying to work out oh, what is this ounce to gram, say you're doing your shopping and you're trying to work it out. Multiply by three and add a zero. So approximately this would be 30 grams. You know you don't need a massive jar of oil, you just need a little bit of oil. Uh, one shot shallot, approximately cut in half. Now I don't have shallots, however I do have, where are they? These ones, which are, what are they? They are called shallots, but they're not what they're talking about, right? They're talking about the shallots, the little onions. I'm gonna use a couple of stems of these instead. So in that goes. One clove of garlic. I am going to put some garlic flakes in. I'm fresh out of garlic, so I'm just gonna pour it all stuck in there. I'm going to put one teaspoon of garlic flakes into it. Fresh is best but you know when I'm in the caravan work with what you've got. Fresh mushrooms cut into halves. Now you might see nine ounces again round it up to ten because that's easier to do. Multiply by three that's 30. Uh, in it goes so about 300 grams of your onions cut in halves and then some salt. Where's my salt? Here it is. Salt and pepper always disappears in my kitchen. And we're gonna cook this off. It's gonna get nice and soft in here before we then drain it and move on to the next step. So the beauty of the Thermomix is it's got a chop step first, five seconds speed five, just roughly dicing that down. And keep the measuring cup inserted. I will show you that chop though. Just wait for those arms to release. Oh look, it looks like a paste in there now. You can see that beautiful paste. And now we've got a five minute cook time. So it's five minutes, 120 degrees, reverse, reverse, slow speed. Now this is our paste that actually gets put onto our flattened chicken breast. So if you are cooking along to this video today or later on, do spend this time now flattening your chicken breast out because your chicken breast is gonna hold some beautiful, uh, I'm gonna use salami, but you could use ham. Uh, anything like that, you can even put cheese into it and it's got this beautiful mushroom paste as well. Then it gets steamed and then it gets finished off in the oven with some beautiful potatoes as well. So I'm gonna come back in five minutes. Uh, I'm gonna show you the next step in this beautiful recipe. So we'll see you in a couple of minutes time. Bye for now. Okay guys, the five minute cook time is now done and it says to drain the mushrooms through the Varoma. Now I'm actually not gonna use my Varoma, I am going to use my simmering basket just because that's what I've got on hand. And you can see there's actually quite a bit, actually it's probably a bit dark, sorry guys, but you have to trust me, there's a bit of liquid in the bottom there. So they do need draining, you can't you know, skip that out as much as I love shortcuts where they can be had. I'm just looking for my spatula, there it is. Yeah, where there can be shortcuts, you guys know that I will shortcut things. So scrape that out. It's, it is a paste, quite of a chunky paste in there. I did re-blitz a little bit at the end because there were some lengths of the shallots because I hadn't chopped them small enough. You could see that there were stringy bits, so I did a little chop. I think it was five seconds speed five, uh, just to get rid of the couple of lengths that remained in there. So. Next up, we're moving along. We'll let that set aside and drain. Don't forget to capture a little bit that's left on your lid. So I'll just scrape that off as well. By the way, do you guys know to scrape your lid well, turn your spatula upside down. 
okay it then allows it fits perfectly in there to scrape that off and scrape even the seal line okay that's done now let's get going next place a baking dish onto the mixing bowl lid okay this is my oven dish that I've got the caravan so that's what's going to be used and it says to um, put some potatoes in it okay chopped up so I've done that I've pre-done that I reckon you can put any veggies in there I don't think it has to be just potatoes set the baking dish with the potatoes outside check all right now we're making a beautiful glaze for the potatoes so the first thing it asks for is a sweetener maple syrup or honey I'm using rice malt syrup you guys will be familiar with the fact that we use that a lot of times haven't bothered cleaning the bowl out okay which is a win just see if I can get close to this yeah I love it when we don't have to clean the bowl out that to me is happy days okay one ounce of unsalted butter in that goes now we've got some beautiful spices next that are going to go in as well so not quite enough a little bit more and a wee bit more there's another chunk in that corner might be too much oh no close enough all right, next up, some smoked paprika. I don't have smoked paprika, I've just got sweet. So just use what you've got, all right? So in with the sweet paprika, half a teaspoon. My kids won't eat the ground, so I just use the sweet all the time. Uh, two pinches of cinnamon. How yummy is this gonna be, these beautiful potatoes? Just guesstimating that. Uh, some pepper. Again, my kids won't eat it if it's hot. I'm just gonna put a little bit of standard pepper in, okay? Just a wee bit. Two, three pinches of salt so in this goes, and then I think they're pretty much done. One, being Jamie Oliver, two, one more, three, and that's it. So now we're going to put the lid back on, and it's going to, where's the lid? Here we go, let's do the next step. I love that the Thermomix just steps you through, right? I don't know about you guys, but I wouldn't even attempt this recipe without a Thermomix and without guided cooking. So it's got a three minute cook time. 195 degrees Fahrenheit because of course we're using a US recipe it doesn't matter though we just match the speed up and off it goes and off to speed one so we spin that up and I'll be back in three minutes to show you the next step we must be getting close to assembling our beautiful chicken uh, so I'll show you that step in a moment so I'll see you soon bye for now okay guys I'm back I found the whiskey whiskey is that what it was called I don't know I'm so not that sort of person public service announcement that the elf oil on it will get you if you're not careful had to find a band-aid anyway added it in it's cooked off with that beautiful mix in there and now it's telling us what to do so it tells us here to add uh, the sauteed mushrooms over the ham so I don't have ham however I have salami so I'm going to use some salami use what you've got they've got like a prosciutto looking ham there I don't know, I think salami will do the job. Kids like salami, so we'll use that here. And I'm just going to lay that over the top in a strip along the edge. It's left over from pizza night the other night. So down that goes. Probably use as little or as much as you like. Completely up to you. Probably could put more on there too. However, I'm just going to leave it at that. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Not quite. Hang on. We've got to change this camera angle. My apologies. So what I've got over here is I've got chicken breasts that hubby got to with a hammer and flattened them right down. I've then got, excuse my back, I've then got the, the, the salami I've just laid on top and now we've got our uh, paste, our mushroom paste from earlier, which I know it doesn't look fantastic, but I'm sure it's gonna taste absolutely amazing. And that was drained, okay? You need to drain it. So just tip this out along here before I spread it out. And then we're going to roll this up. Now it's supposed to be on cling wrap. I am not a fan of cooking in cling wrap. So I'm not going to cook in the cling wrap. I'm going to cook in the baking paper. So. Alrighty, let's keep going. We need to spread that out a little bit. You can see their picture, how they spread it all out to the sides. That's what we want to do. Spread it out. So this is just two chicken breasts spread out with the hammer till they're relatively, is that a quarter of an inch thick? I reckon this is a little bit generous, what hubby's done, but that's okay. Work with what you've got. All right, next, let's see what it says. Carefully roll the cling wrap with the meat tightly and twist the ends of the cling wrap securely. So this is where we get a bit particular and hopefully I don't get my hands dirty. So I'm gonna roll it over, 
Okay, roll it on top of itself. I'm sure, going to actually fold this baking paper. Oh, you guys, I know you can see in the other camera. Awesome. So we're going to roll this over, and as we do, we're going to try and lift it so that it covers itself. Now, as I said, I think mine's a little thick. Doesn't matter. Work with what you've got. So cling wrap would be more pliable, obviously, but just work with what you've got. I was never one for pretty food, so let's not pretend I am, okay? So tuck it in though, so I don't know yet, you guys can see. So once you get it together, tuck it in so that one layer is under the other layer. Tuck it in as tight as you can. And then twist up the ends. So that's fairly tight, round it goes. I love that I didn't get my hands dirty doing that. Did you guys notice that? I don't love, those of you who watch along, you're probably having a giggle. I don't love getting my hands dirty. Okay, twist these ends up just like the picture, tuck it in, twist up, and then this is going into the Varoma. Now if you're worried about the juices and stuff, you could double layer that, you could tuck the ends in and double layer it, but I'm not worried. Okay, so now arrange the stuffed chicken roll in the Varoma dish. So Varoma dish, I've got it out somewhere. Here it is, Varoma dish. Okay, so we're just actually going to put it end to end in there. Make sure the join line is up. It'll keep that stuff from running out. I'm going to put a little bend in line just to keep it so it fits a little better in there. So now to the bowl. We've got those lovely cooked off veggies in there. We want four ounces of water. Just match those scales up. Whoa, okay, a little heavy, doesn't matter. Set the Varoma with the chicken in it. Next, insert the Varoma tray and add some broccoli florets. I've not been organized enough, guys. I didn't get that organized. I will do that off camera in a minute. Secure the Varoma lid and we'll get this cooking. So it's got 15 minutes. So this is when I'm gonna grab that Varoma tray out, dice up my broccoli, put it in here, ready to cook in a moment. And this is just gonna do its thing for that long. Now that's got a little bit of a wiggle and a jiggle to it. To me, I don't think it needs to go that much. So speed three is adequate. All right, so feel free if you feel like it's a bit noisy and it's rattling and carrying on and that's annoying you, turn that speed down. I don't think it needs to Varoma. Even speed three to me, can you see the jiggle in that? Let's just turn it down a bit. There you go. That'll still push the steam up fast enough to cook that meat for you up the top. I need to get these broccoli florets out and get them on, so I'm gonna do that right now. So I will see you at the very end in a moment to show you how we finish off this beautiful recipe where we put the meat in the tray in the oven and let it crisp up and get all caramelly with that beautiful uh, potato as well. So I'll see you soon guys. Bye for now. Okay guys, this is now cooked off beautifully. It's a beautiful uh, sticky syrupy sauce that's gonna go on our potatoes. So it tells us to transfer to the baking dish with the potatoes and mix well with the spatula. So I'll just show you. Uh, you might be able to see. I've, what I've done is I've pushed all the potatoes to one end so that I can pour it over. Did you guys know that trick? If you ever have to put sauces over things, push them all to one space and then you can spread them out again later. I'm just looking for a spatula. Okay. So there we go, that goes in there. Now we don't have to clean out the mixing bowl. How cool is that? We just wanna coat those potatoes a little bit. Make sure each of the potatoes has that beautiful sauce on it before we spread them back out. You'll need a space in the middle for the, the, the meat to go later. Okay, so I'll put that aside and we'll come back to that later. Let's keep going with this recipe. So now we're going to put a shallot in. Now this time I've chopped them a bit smaller. This is probably the size those first ones should have been. Learn from my mistake. Next, no, oh, it's waking up. There we go. Celery, three and a half, uh, three and a half ounces. Now I freeze mine, so you might notice it looks really frosty. It's literally come out of the freezer. I just sliced it up and I use that. Uh, so I freeze my leftovers after I make my veggie stock. So I've got them on hand for when a random recipe calls for celery. We don't use celery very often here. Four and a half ounces, that'll do. Three and a half ounces of leek. I did have to specially go buy leek for this recipe because it's not something I normally have. However, there was leftover. I've frozen that for my next batch of veggie stock. Two and a half ounces of carrots cut into pieces. Don't peel them, just put them in. There we go, 2.2, on with the measuring cup and let's see what we do next. I do love this recipe, it's just building on top of each other. And by the way, 
make goes, I've never made this recipe before. And this is what I love about cookie dough is that even if you've not made something, it makes it achievable and easy to do. And you know, if this was in a cookbook, I wouldn't probably give it a go. But the step by step makes it so easy to do. Straight down the sides, I'm not gonna do that. But let me show you that chop. How cool is the chop in the Thermomix? That doesn't get old. So butter now. So we've got one and a half ounces of butter. Let's put some chunks in and see what it comes up with. That's half. There it goes. Nearly there. That'll do. 1.3. Oh, some whiskey. Oh, okay. Where did that get put? Hubby especially went and bought whiskey for this recipe. I said, can I skip it out? And he said, no, I'll go buy some. Uh, so I'm going to have to search for that. So I'll just keep going through this recipe and know that when I go offline in a minute, I'm going to find that whiskey, bring up the scales and put in one and a half ounces because it's now going to cook off for seven minutes at uh, 250 Fahrenheit. And while it does, it tells me what to do with my chicken. So let me come back to you in a moment. I need to get that whiskey, get it in the Thermomix. And when I come back, I'll have my chicken ready to show you how we're going to assemble our chicken. So I'll see you shortly, guys. Bye for now. Okay, I'm back. I've just put that uh, chicken roll in the oven. It's got 15 minutes to do that in the oven. Now, we're gonna come to this next step. Sorry, I jumped ahead to grab the ingredients. So, in the bowl, if you remember, we've got this beautiful steaming liquid that was used and it's got the juices in it. It's also got uh, some carrots and celery and leek in there as well. So that beautiful liquid still remains. We're making a beautiful sauce. So the first thing we need is, is one ounce of unsalted butter cut into pieces. I'm just going to put that in there. A little bit more, that's okay. Reserved nuts. I don't know if you remember, at the very beginning we chopped some nuts down very loosely. And seven ounces of water. I'm going to go a little light on the water because I do recall I put extra in with the steaming liquid accidentally. So I'm just going to go light on. There we go and without the measuring cup. So I'm nearly done. This is now going to cook off for 10 minutes at 100, no, 212 degrees before we come back, balance this till it's nice and silky smooth and we have finished our dish. So I will come back when it's all done and I'll show you the final product. So I look forward to showing you that very shortly, but I hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you soon. Okay, we're back and this has just had a really good cook time and it says to preheat my oven, which I've done already. Now it says to re remove the aroma and set aside and transfer the broccoli to a bowl to keep warm. So let's just flick this off. I did manage to get the broccoli in there. Okay, you'll be pleased to know. Um, I'm just going to put it aside over here, out of the way for the moment. Now, set the varoma dish with the chicken roll back into position, which it is, so that's okay and carefully open the cling wrap and remove the stuffed chicken letting the juices drip into the mixing bowl okay so we want the juices oh this is where it gets a little scary uh, we want the juices to fall you guys can see that in there we want all the juices out of that roll into the bowl this is where it could unroll on us it doesn't need to be fully cooked through so don't stress if you open it up you know what i've got a different plan where's a knife i'm going to stab my paper and let the juices roll out that way because I am concerned that if I will try and let them run out I don't know if this knife is fitting through the holes there we go I'm concerned that if I roll it it's good because my chicken was still that little bit too fat I'm a bit concerned that it may end up unrolling itself completely because I do have some of that beautiful mushroom sticking out so the juices are running down through the holes that I've created in the baking paper there they go it wants that juice in the bottom because you're making a gravy with it. Sorry, I don't think you can actually see me looking. But anyway, I'm looking. Next. And then we're going to set the varoma aside. Transfer the stuffed chicken roll into the baking dish with the potatoes. So let's grab those potatoes over. Alright. So they have those little lovely juices on them. Just spread them out a little bit. I was actually thinking a second ago, I reckon that broccoli would be absolutely beautiful. Oh, sorry guys, you guys can't see. And do excuse as I look down occasionally. My laptop is down low, you guys are up high. So I do occasionally want to check that you guys can see. Just spreading those potatoes out. So I'm not ignoring you, I'm just looking to check, you can see. All right, so 
what are we up to? Transfer the stuffed chicken roll into the baking dish with the potatoes. Oh, all right, now it gets tricky. Let's see if we can do this without wrecking or breaking or messing up too much. Whoa, okay, the baking paper is ripping. So let's, we're gonna have to do it with hands. Oh, this is so gonna be messy. Um, I wonder if I can just pour it in. I wanna actually flip it up anyway, so I'm just trying. I don't know if you guys can see that. There we go. There we go. I do have a little bit of baking paper left under it. So let me just, we know nobody wants to eat baking paper. Let's see if we can get that out. And I want to flip it because you can see my join line is at the top. So I want to actually get that join line at the bottom. There we go. Which gives us the perfect chance to get rid of that paper. You can see there it's a little bit raw still. That will be all cooked up in that oven in a moment. So, transfer the stuffed chicken on the baking dish with the potatoes, then cook for 15 to 20 minutes. Meanwhile, continue with the recipe. So, let's finish this up. I might actually get this in the oven, and I will pop back in two seconds to show you this very last step on the recipe. So, I'll see you in a second, guys.